Welcome to renovating a Mary Beam engine. This is part three. And I'm just about to remove the steam chest cover to have a look at the valve inside the steam chest. The valve events are not right on this engine, not right at all. One of the problems is a lot of slop and play in the valve linkage, but it's not just that, the timing is radically out. So I'm going to have a quick look and see where the valve is actually set in the valve chest. And the first thing to do is to remove all these 8BA nuts. These are very small and easily lost, so it's quite important to find a suitable box to put them in. The valve chest cover comes away quite easily. There isn't a gasket in place. This engine is very well made and things do fit together quite well. The slide valve appears to be completely in the wrong place. It only uncovers one of the steam ports. Once I removed the valve link rod, I could see there was plenty of play on the shaft with this upright arm. So I thought it was a good idea to remove the bearing caps and take out the assembly to fix it. Each of these bearing caps are held in place by a pair of bolts. And once I removed the bolts, I thought it would be a good idea to clean up the top face, as it was quite tarnished and dirty. An easy way I find to do this is to just use a piece of 800 grade wet or dry sandpaper on a metal block. It doesn't need to be a proper surface plate for this, just a piece of steel will do, as long as it's flat. By rubbing the component back and forth on this piece of sandpaper, you will eventually get quite a good surface finish. Put a piece of cloth on the block and rub it on the cloth for a while and you get a really nice finish. Here you see me taking off the other bearing cap, using a spanner to initially slacken off the bolts and then I use a small box spanner. I turn the end as you can see on this box spanner in the lathe to make it very thin at the end and it allows it to get into very small places. Don't forget to put all these small parts in a safe place, especially the nuts and bolts. The top surface of the bearing cap gets exactly the same treatment as previously shown. While I had my special box spanner handy, I removed the exhaust manifold. This was over painted and didn't look very good. What I'm going to do is remove the paint and polish up the part. Then I removed the valve rod lever. This was a simple job, I simply knocked out the pin. The whole thing is a little bit sloppy, so when I put it back on, I'll probably put it on with some Loctite. But for the moment, it's time to clean it up. When using the 800 wet or dry sandpaper method, if the parts are steel, I recommend using some oil. This will stop the metal from dragging. Brass seems to be fairly self-lubricating, but steel isn't, and you get a better finish this way. This is very messy and time-consuming, but it's worth it. I don't just want to put the part on a polishing spindle because that will round the edges and as you can see it looks quite nice now. I removed the top caps of the bearings in the first place because I thought that the whole assembly would be able to be withdrawn from underneath the cylinder. But I was actually wrong. I would have had to remove the cylinder itself to do that. As it turned out it didn't really need removing anyway because the parts underneath the cylinder are very solidly and firmly attached to the shaft. It was only the arm at the end of the shaft that was actually loose. So I replaced the bearing caps and I adjusted them, making sure that the top caps were not over tightened to distort the bearing, so that the whole assembly moved very freely. Once the bearing caps were in place, I put a spot of oil on each bearing, and the whole thing is very free with no shake whatsoever. So this very important part of the renovation is now completed and all back together. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful.